gon' chew me, cause the showtime. Go ahead and call the gang up for the one time. Rap food rhymes, got them on the line. And my life's still great, I'm doing just fine. Hands up. Um, to our next topic, which is the Disney Experience Showcase, otherwise known as D23 2024. We got a lot of announcements. We got some Marvel news. We got some Disney Pixar announcements. And we got some theme park announcements. So if you guys recall, we've been having some conversations about Universal as far as Epic Universe and some other projects that they've been working on. And Disney might be coming with the heat. But let's go through, let's start with these Marvel announcements. So for 2024, uh, we got the Eyes of Wakanda, um, which is going to be four episodes. Um, they didn't put like the month. They're just saying 2024. Your Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. Um, the only release date I saw was coming off of IMDb. They said the first episode for that is supposed to release November 2nd, 2024. And then we have Marvel Zombies which is going to be rated mature on Disney Plus, mm. And it's going to be a four episode mini series. Eyes of Wakanda is also supposed to be a four episode mini series. Uh, coming into 2025, um, Ironheart's supposed to be coming. Um, the trailer got leaked. If you were following all the D23 announcements, the trailer for Ironheart did get leaked. But given that D23 was a week ago, those videos might still not be there. Uh, the Thunderbolts trailer uh, got leaked. And we got some news on Daredevil Born Again, the Disney Plus series that I believe they're supposed to be continuing the story from when Daredevil was on Netflix, um, those seasons, which is coming March 2025. Um, other projects that got announced, but we don't have any dates yet. What If Season 3, which is going to be the final season of the What If franchise. And we got a little bit of insight into X-Men 97 season two. We got to look at some new suits as well as some characters that they're going to be putting into this new season. Can't remember everybody, but I know I was stoked about Polaris um, entering the scene. She's going to be in X-Men 97 season two. But um, let's go ahead and run the clock on the Marvel announcements, Ryan. Which one um, are you excited for? Mm. <laughs> I don't want to sound like no I don't want to sound like a Disney hater bro but it's like none of it really caught my eye like with the um Eyes of Wakanda I know you said that's a series is it like live action is it animation it's and does animated. it tie into the so does it tie into the current story of Black of Black Panther not no I'll say no based on the description of the series but Eyes of Wakanda your friendly hood na- your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man Marvel Zombies are all going to be animated series. Now, Eyes of Wakanda, a little bit more info into that. The synopsis is that throughout Wakandan history, brave warriors have been tasked to travel the world retrieving dangerous vibranium artifacts. So I did see a little tidbit that they're going to be going, they're going to be like doing like a time traveling type thing. So we're going to be able mm-hmm. to see Wakanda in different time periods. Um, I'm not sure how true that is. but um it might be interesting um i don't see it tying into black panther of what we already got though i i don't want to sound like a disney hater when it just comes to those marvel marvel mcu series drops none of it really caught my eye now x-men 97 because i know you've given it so many flowers and so much praise it is in my backlog. It is one of those things, and I'm actually touching my backlog since I'm watching Full Metal Alchemist, but X-Men 97 is probably one of those things. If I find time to watch season one, I might grapple grapple on the season two. I think you might like Marvel Zombies, too. So Marvel Zombies is... I think this came from... In What If Season 1, they had an episode where a zombie outbreak happened. And, all of, and there was a subset of heroes, like Spider-Man, Scarlet Witch... Um, can't remember who else was there but there was a subset of heroes that were fighting the zombies now Mm -hmm. i think that this series is going to focus on that universe because the whole what if premise is that we're in these different universes where these different things has happened i think marvel zombies is going to focus in on that universe i also believe that marvel zombies is an actual comic book storyline so Mm. i would be interested to see 
what they pull from the comics and how this if and how this is going to tie back to that zombies episode and what if season one so and with it being rated mature this i would say this to me let me know if i'm incorrect Mm -hmm. in the comments i think this is the first mature animated series coming to disney as in terms of marvel Mm. content so I wonder what that means for the future. If it does well, are they going to take more risk? Like, it seems like they fully accept Deadpool now. Mm-hmm. So it's like, is Disney finna hit that switcheroo and be like, our content is for adults too, finally. <laughs> it's not just for kids. I I would be interested. I would be interested to see what limits they push because I remember hearing some complaints when Moon Knight came out. M- I believe Moon Knight was rated mature. But the, I guess the mature themes that they put in the series was kind of like, hey, this could have just been TV 14 or this didn't, or it didn't push the envelope that we thought you guys were going to push the envelope by saying that this was a mature series. But I think with Daredevil, Deadpool, Daredevil, Daredevil is also going to be rated mature. And then if you've watched the Netflix uh, series, of this, there are some like heavy, mature, like violence and themes going on in it. I think Echo, I don't remember if Echo was rated mature, but I would see how far they push the envelope for Marvel Zombies, as well as with it being animated, because we talk about all the time about how things can be elevated and like there's so much more you can do in animation than you can do in live action. I would exactly. be willing to see if they're going to push the envelope with Marvel Zombies by calling this a mature project. Hmm. Okay. And what and what caught your eye out of all of those? Um, Marvel Zombies, um, they didn't release a trailer or anything for your friendly Spider-Man, so I'm gonna wait for the trailer with that. Um Thunderbolts, that trailer leak, that's gonna be nice. That's going to be nice. I think you would like that, Ron. We're going back to, like, the street Marvel. Like, we're getting out of all of, like, the mystical stuff. So we're going back to, like, the street level heroes. Yelena's coming back. Ghost from Ant-Man and the Wasp. Taskmaster from uh, Black Widow. Bucky, so Winter Soldier. U.S. Agent's going to be in there. And it's given, like, the way that it was described. I kind of agree with based on the trailer. They said they would describe this as Marvel's Suicide Squad. Huh. Okay. So based on the trailer and given the people who are on the team, because these aren't good people. Like Bucky had right. that like Bucky had that time where he like redeemed himself. But like going back in history of Winter Man. Soldier's history. He didn't redeem himself for me. <laughs> So like all of like all of these people, I would say that er- everybody on this lineup have dark pasts. At one mm-hmm. point of time, they were they were the ops, or they still are the ops. So right. I I like what I saw in the trailer. I'm interested to see how this plays out. Um, Ironheart is caught my eye because I didn't know that Ryan Coogler, who did Black Panther uh, and Wakanda Forever, was going to be over the project. So I'm okay. interested. I'm I guess I would say um I'm satisfied or like I'm glad that he has the project with Ironheart being like a black woman female character in the MCU and her getting her own solo series and what we've seen with Ryan Coogler do with Black Panther. I would I would fully say that I'm glad that he's he's over the series. Okay. Um X-Men 97, you already know. Yeah. What if season three? I shrugged. I really like what if season one. I liked it so much that I thought that like Marvel was like gonna be beating on DC's door as far as animation and as we fast forward that I think that first season maybe dropped 2021 22 as we fast forward now with everything else they're coming up they're still banging on DC's door but what if season one when they came out with that animated project I was like oh yeah Marvel's coming season two was a letdown for me wasn't a big fan of season two 
hopefully gotcha. see half hopefully season three comes back and you know they can end this off on a good note and i'll just be like hey you guys had two good seasons instead of saying you know season one is the only good shit coming out of what if okay okay there go y'all disney show recommendations for 2024 and onward yeah we might have some different opinions when these come out but <laughs> I I think I think the updates that came out of Marvel for D twenty three were pretty nice. good. I think we I think as Marvel fans we have some some good projects to look forward to. Moving into the Disney Pixar announcement, so this is going to be a mix of Disney animated movies, Disney projects like TV series, etc., as well as Pixar projects. Starting with 2024, we got Moana 2 coming out November 27th, 2024. The Wizards of Waverly Place reboot, Wizards Beyond Waverly Place, um, doesn't have a month, but they're saying 2024. And then Pixar is uh, dropping a series on Disney Plus called Win or Lose that is supposed to drop December 6th, 2024. Moving into 2025, we got the first trailer for the Snow White live action Coming out March 21st, 2025. Zootopia 2 is supposed to be coming out November 26, 2025. Avatar 3, Fire and Ash, December 19th, 2025. We got a little teaser for the Lilo and Stitch live action, which is supposed to be dropping summer 2025. And then the Freaky Friday uh, sequel, Freakier Friday, is also supposed to be coming out 2025. And then looking at 2026 and beyond, Toy Story 5 drops June 19th, 2026. Frozen 3 is uh, slated for 2027. And then we got announcements for Incredibles 3 and uh, a Tiana series spinning off from Princess and the Frog. But those announcements didn't have any dates. So 2027 is crazy work. They got to keep... Yeah. I... I only feel like they said it, and we say this all the time. I only feel like they said it because Frozen is one as, as of like the twenty, like twenty yeah. tens, twenty twenties. Frozen is one of Disney's biggest franchises. Yeah, like that for a certain for a very specific generation of kids, it it was it is that it is that I will I agree. So I like. Agree. 2027 is crazy work given that we're in august 2024 right now that is crazy work but i just feel like it's kind of like when they announced the the avatar movie like the whole avatar studios thing like back when we were like in what 2022 2021 yeah. and now Pre-pan- and then pandemic and the movie's not even coming out until like 2025 i feel like that's what Frozen Three is and and now in announcing Incredibles Three with no year no day, they gonna say twenty thirty three for Incredibles Three. They're like we gonna line it up, we gonna make it work. Because how long did it take for Incredibles Two to come out? Like, didn't they say they was working on that for years? That was well, I think it was. They weren't sure if they were, or I feel like the situation was they weren't getting a sequel, and then they were like, oh, we're getting a sequel. Because I feel like there's like a 14, 15 year gap between yeah. Incredibles 1 and Incredibles 2. I hope that it doesn't take that long to get to Incredibles 3. And they close that gap. But Jack-Jack better be at least 10 years old by now. Jack-Jack gotta be Jack's age. Yeah. Not Jack's. Yeah. Dash's age. Dash. Dash gotta be a bit older. I saw a tweet about uh, people hoping that Violet finally reaches her full potential. Because every episode, yeah. if not every episode, every movie is like all oh, Violet's, you know, reaching her full potential, but she's not there yet. I like her powers are actually sick. She's actually she has the potential to be the coldest one there. Actually. That's uh, is hello. Like Jack Jack Fire, obviously, but like Violet in terms of like mm-hmm. the force fields and invisibility and other stuff, like she she has the potential to be fire. Yeah, like for real, like she could be like Invisible Woman from Fantastic yeah. Four. Honest, honestly, honestly, I wonder if the third Incredibles. I know we got to talk about the other franchises, but I wonder if Incredibles three are is it going to be like a past the mantle type of movie? Like now the parents are passing to their kids if the kids are a lot older and like now they're in that realm of we're the next generation of superheroes. I feel like that would be fitting. If, if I could see if it that's working. your if that's your theory, I definitely agree because Incredibles one was focused on Bob. 
Mr. Incredible. Incredibles 2 was focused on Elastigirl. I think it would be fitting if Incredibles 3 solely focuses on the kids. And yeah, and they're and like the that, big, the new the, hero. Right. And they are the, you know, the up and coming heroes. Like mom and dad can't do it no more. Like, you know, we're retired. We want to sit down. And the villain is solely focused on, it's their villain. Yeah. It's their opposition. I could see that really working. I feel like it would, I think it's the appropriate time. And especially if they're going to turn it to make another fourth movie or fifth movie in the saga mm-hmm. for that, for the next generation of Incredibles fan, I fans, I see that working too. Now, Incredibles was a franchise that I think Disney did really well with bringing that back. Because you wait, you I, wait 14, 15 years, you have a whole new generation of kids to like expose this franchise to exactly so now so now you have now you have that excuse of oh why don't we make a third incredibles where you saw how the second one did exactly it makes a lot of sense i even i will say this though when i watched it i did enjoy it but i would have loved if it did come earlier only because Mm -hmm. that hype did die down because i was such a huge fan of the incredibles back when i was younger like i watched the incredibles one probably like four or five times more than that really well, it all it all goes back that to the fact that I, I guess I would say I was glad that Disney went back and picked that up, and not mm-hmm. made it like a one and done type thing. Right. So. But, um, when it comes to their other Pixar announcements, I'm gonna say this about the series. I don't think I'm going back to Wizards of Waverly Place beyond Waverly Place. I I thoroughly enjoy Wizards of Waverly Place. I don't think I'm going back to that though. I it didn't give. Like, I, I'm, I'm gonna say this. It didn't give the reboot. It wasn't given. The trailer, the little teaser thing that they gave us, it didn't give. Yeah, like I enjoyed the movies. The series was one of my favorite Disney series because I wasn't no Disney kid back in the day, but I did watch Wizards of Waverly Place. I loved the fantasy and the magic, mm-hmm. but it didn't. I'm I I don't know if I'm too old. I don't know if I grew out of it. I don't know what it. I'm not going back to it. If this new generation of teenagers and at and kid, toddlers and kids want to watch it, y'all enjoy it. I hope y'all like it, but it doesn't look like it's for me. Yeah, I. Yeah, I I don't think I'm gonna check it out. Um, uh, I. Had... I'm excited about the Snow White live action. Um, the actress who's playing Snow White is Rachel Zegler, who played um, what's her face in Hunger Games, mm-hmm. that little song versus Snake. So I really like her her voice, like her singing and things like that. So I was gonna check it out. Um, you think they're gonna beat that controversy that was kind of attached to like the old Snow White reveal trailers? What was the controversy? It was a few things. I know one of the bigger ones because they only had one person in the show with dwarfism and the other six were like traditionally sized adults. A lot of people in that in the dwarfism community were like, this was y'all time to really have us in here and y'all did us dirty. This is not you being accepting. This is the complete opposite. And then I think that's what led to the pushback. And now they got all the animated dwarves. Hmm. I knew nothing about that. I remember that was one of the things, and it seems like they're also only. I only know this because I think once we was typing this stuff up, and I was putting it in our backlog. You know how cash data works, mm-hmm. and now all of the old stuff started popping up. I noticed. I remember this coming up, but this always happens. Like, okay, they're getting away from the prints, and they're making a more modern story. Some people are mad about that, but that's kind of expected. Like it is what it is. But I know that when it came to the dwarfism and how they didn't give them representation for real, that a lot of people from that community were upset. And now they got the animated dwarves, it seems, to replace all of the original actors. I didn't know anything about that. I would have to read more into it. Um, But I will say, like, when the trailer came out, I still didn't see anything about that when they dropped the trailer. Mm -hmm. So I would have to look more into that. Because I didn't, I didn't know that that was going on with that movie. See, I'm not much of a Disney princess fan. I just know little bits and pieces of it popped up on my timeline mm-hmm. back in the day. And then I started seeing more of that information coming out again because I guess, like, you know how the Google works. And I was like, oh, I wonder if they're going to beat that. I wonder, because, like, they already invested the money. I think it's like a 
couple hundred dollar million dollar project. So Oh, if they've invested millions of dollars, this is about to be yeah. they they shipping that movie. They're shipping yeah. it. I, I it ain't going nowhere. Yeah, they're shipping that. I Hmm. Cuz I, I cuz they dropped the trailer at D23 and I didn't see anything. I didn't see anything about that. Mhm. But I guess I, other than Snow White the Lilo and Stitch thing, I thought I thought it was a joke. Long as Nami thick. Hey. Hey. Cause out of hey. all these live actions, I might go watch that. And I ain't finna get into all the politics with all the race and all that other stuff swapping. Long as Nami thick. Long as <laughs> Nami and all them other surfboard riding women are thick. And for all the folks, oh, this is a kids movie. It's not that we sexualizing they, now. They was thick. They was thick in the animated series. They was thick back in the day. Have you seen Mr. Bubbles? Big, Look. thick black man. Talking about he a social worker. He would be. He, he was. Would be he, Every, he, he would. Everybody, everybody, everybody was thick in that movie. Look, I would just say on the because the only teaser they gave us, they showed us what Stitch looks like, and I feel like that was a good move. Because he did look pretty good. Because if everybody remembers the Sonic situation when they didn't even show us what Sonic looked like until that first trailer came out and, and they had to go back to the drawing board, Disney said, Oh, we not we not making that mistake. We finna show y'all this first. Be like, do y'all like the CGI or not? Because this is this is the vibe. This is for all the other aliens. Yeah, so I thought he looked good. It looked good. Now, am I do I feel like this Lilo and Stitch live action is necessary? Absolutely not. Are any of these live actions really necessary? Only the villain ones. Which I'll do I, that because they differ. Which, but I wouldn't even consider those remakes. I wouldn't consider them live action remakes. Alternatives. Uh, live action alternatives. Yeah. Those are fire. Maleficent, fire. Cruella, fire. Like, but everything else here's the thing. I wouldn't, like, I probably wouldn't have watched this. I will say this. I will say this, because I enjoyed Lilo and Stitch. They could have just did a reboot of the animation or take it from a different story or follow someone else in well, um, the Lilo and Stitch world. I would say this. I would say this. I honestly feel like this live action is milking Lilo and Stitch. Lilo and Stitch has three movies. It do. And an animated series. That did a crossover with Kim Possible. I do remember that. That was good. <laughs> and they had a ride at Magic. And they had a ride at Magic Kingdom. Yeah, and and you know what? That's the thing. That's the thing. I don't. I think... go ahead. I'm not in full support of Disney live actioning all of their old IPs, but I'm not going to lie. I enjoy Lilo and Stitch enough compared to everything else. I might, I'm probably going to watch this if ain't nothing else out. Like, if there's nothing else out, and I'm like, I want to go on a date and go to the movies with somebody, or I'm going to go by myself, I would watch Lilo and Stitch. And that's fair, because this is, this feels different from all of the live actions. I would like to see the trailer. Are they going to keep the fun by, because all of the right. live action Disney series have been, like, very serious, or very, like, Disney princess focused, and they've all been, like, musicals. And like Lilo yeah. and Stitch is that one, um, you know, there's not, they have music, but it's not like Lilo stops in the middle of her hula practice and belts out a note and then goes back to her hula practice. Like, I want to see the vibe of what they're going for this Lilo and Stitch. Is it going to give me fun summer movie, summertime movie, aliens girl in gets Hawaii? An alien after being bullied. Right. Yeah. Is it going to give me that same vibe? Like, and, and with the, the family mixed in it the family uh morals and concepts and values is it gonna give me that now if you can give me all of that you might have something disney i'll let you slide and, and what was that alien's name because there was two of them that were kind of like hunting Clickly, them down the big Clickly one and uh and jumba jumba was the big one that looked like a hey, whale Clickly, well. Clickly However, gotta I'll have they bob with. let me say this oh yeah let me say this <laughs> And I, I'm going to look dead at the camera. Dead at the camera. Pleakley better have that bob. And I'm not playing. And I'm not playing. Look. He did have that bob on. The bob and they dress. 
and they close. Listen, <laughs> let, let's not change. But how is up. that going to trend? I want to know how that's going to translate to live action though, because that's going to be so freaking crazy. I don't care. Bro. I don't care. <laughs> so crazy. I don't. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. With that one with you that one it. big you eye. I don't. <laughs> they better look good. They better look good. They better have that bob because if you not gonna show me three movies, an animated series, and a crossover with Kim Possible, and completely don't have that bob. Gotta have a bob. Gotta have that bob. That's that's how you'll get me. That's how you'll get me. (laughs) If that trailer shows Pleakley and Jumba and Jumba with his Hawaiian shirt on his shorts and Pleakley with that bob, you got it. And thank Nani. Nani. (laughs) Let's not forget. Let's not forget. But I would be interested to see when a full trailer comes out for this. Because if they're talking about summer 2025, it's coming soon. Probably not this month, probably not the next month, but a trailer is going to be coming eventually, and I would like to see how everybody's going to look. And it seems like we're still finna milk the blue people version of Avatar like it's just the best thing since that, sliced bread. James Cameron, I... James Cameron said he had five movies. I couldn't even get through the first one. I mm. fell asleep on the first one. Look, y'all can have it. Y'all can have it. I I watched one and two. And it was okay, but I don't know what type of marketing y'all have to where y'all just make everybody believe this is like the most amazing movie franchise. But the thing, but the thing about it, but the thing about I don't it, get it. I feel like Disney probably wouldn't have green light, green lit the rest of them because Avatar: Way of the Water brought in the coin. They made their money. They made their money on, on their second one. It was here's the thing. It wasn't a bad movie, but it ain't a great movie either. Like it did nothing special. Like I enjoyed it. I it wasn't bad, Look, but it wasn't great. It was just six, seven. Did we do a mob review for that? Nah, cause I ain't gonna see it. It was like it was like oh yeah, that was before we did the solo reviews. It was like a six out of ten at the highest of seven if you thoroughly enjoyed it. But I don't see it on average being that amazing movie that the marketing material made it seem like it is. I. I ain't got nothing to say for it. I fell asleep watching the first one. Y'all can have it. That's that's my only that's my only statements on the Avatar franchise. I I'm gonna watch it because I do watch them, but it's like it's not one of those movies that I went back to and watched the second or third time. I did not do that. No, it's it's not Harry Potter. It's not OG Transformers. It's it's not Star Wars. I'm not even a Star Wars fan. I know it's not there. It's it's not that. Well, you heard it here first. Ryan said it's a dub. He's calling it a dub. Look, Look the good last... mid. Good mid. <laughs> good mid. That's, I got I to gotta relate to the younger folks. It's it's good mid. Not good mid. Man, but the last, the last thing I want to talk about before we get into the theme park announcements. Toy Story 5. Now, the concept of them taking on the iPad kids. Sure. But five Toy Stories, they really could have stopped after three. I feel like Toy Story 4 was a waste. Five also seems like a waste. We really could have stopped at three. Go go back. Y'all go back and watch our Pixar versus DreamWorks um, tournament. I'm not commenting because I think people got on my ass for saying Toy that. Story can Toy go. Story I know what I said. <laughs> Toy, Toy Story, Story can that. go. <laughs> Um, I after the third one, after the third one, it was just like okay, because that fourth. I don't see. I don't even remember. The only thing I remember from that fourth movie is that that fork, that fork that she made at school that turned into a toy. That's the only thing I remember from that movie. I I get that y'all want to appeal to the kids and the next generation, but I feel like they deserve better. (laughs) I'm sorry. I I only feel like I only feel like they had to double back with Toy Story because Lightyear, the Buzz. Lightyear did movie. good, didn't it? No, it didn't do good. No, no. <laughs> really? They ain't sell no toys, no nothing. I, I didn't. I knew I wasn't going to watch it, but I didn't know if the kids liked it or not. I heard it wasn't good. Oh, how to do in the box? The global, not even the global box office, just the regular box I'm office finna versus go see. how much they invested. I'm finna go see. So at the box office, they made two hundred twenty-six point four million USD. I <sighs> guess. That's, right, they that's, had to invest that's, at least about a hundred into that, though. They're not the te- animations. They're not telling. They're not showing me how much they put into the movie. But 
going off the Google ratings, it has a 2.7. What's this Metacritic and IMDb? And so Black IMDb IMDb gave it a 6.1 out of 10. Rotten Tomatoes gave it a 74. And Letterbox, which that's like personal, like um, people put in their scores for it. They gave it a 2.8 out of 5. So it so seems it like seems based like on the, the rates, were, it sounds like, once again, good mid. But I heard people mid. didn't like it. It was good mid. It was probably good mid or mid mid. Or may, maybe they, maybe this, maybe they made like $227 million at the box office, but maybe they were expecting more. For the people who want to know what good mid is, if mid slash full average is like five, good mid is like 5.5, 5, 6, 6.2. That yeah. sounds like good mid. Good mid. It's the, almost. It sounded like it was almost there. What's our rating scale? Almost there. That's what it sounded almost like. Almost there. But um, I don't know, man. I don't. I think I would. I don't know if I if I'm just bored. Maybe I'll go see Toy Story five in the theaters. But the way movie tickets are like steadily increasing, you really got to pick and choose about what you want to. <sighs> You really got to pick noticed it. noticed that. Hello? I think I spent like $25 on some XD tickets. Am I tripping? Let me, do I got that screenshot? But, um, you really got to pick and choose what movies you want to go to, especially with, like, Toy Story is definitely a family film. So, uh, you and your family of four, if we're rounding up to, like, movie tickets are, like, $20 a person... And the, and the popcorn, you want the large popcorn, drinks and stuff. You, that that adds up, my gene. So this Toy you and, Story, you and your wife better split that drink. I'm gonna say this: while y'all standing in line going to see Toy Story Five, I'm standing in line to see Shrek Five. Now what? Yeah. Now yeah. what? <laughs> you seen that? You seen that movie? That um, it's like a meme or a little short video where it's like the guy who's married versus a guy that's single. The guy that's married got like a KitchenAid or a blender, and the guy that's single got a PS Five. <laughs> we walking in there going to see. We seen Shrek Five. You over there looking sad, going to see Toy Story. I'm going to family. see. I'm going to see Shrek Five and Shrek. And DreamWorks better pull out a good ass storyline for Shrek. This 5. is their time to redeem themselves. It's been enough time. Yeah, y'all can redeem yourselves. Like. Some got some got to move. We can get four Kung Fu Pandas. Yeah, y'all can bring the heat with Shrek 5. And, People still want, asking for Kung Fu Panda. Come on. And I want some Shrek 2 energy. Keep the satire in there. The realistic they, references. Look, enough done happened. This is the recipe. Because Puss in Boots, The Last Wish, is like, that was great. That had the satire of Shrek 2 while and the, the the animation was great while appealing to a younger audience. If that is the bar, and mm -hmm. that's that's the bar that I want them to hit. If you can give me Puss and Boost the last wish for Shrek 5, y'all got it. Y'all got yeah. it in the bag. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. They can redeem themselves. I feel like. That movie Dreamworks. was so good that we had to publicly apologize to Ralph because we laughed at him. When he, when, when, he, when we when, did that, um, 2022, yes. was it? Expectations? Yes, we had to publicly apologize to Ralph for laughing at him. That movie, that movie was good. That's why he don't be in these episodes. He said, y'all ain't finna bully my opinions no more. We, we apologize, Ralph. We, we apologize, Come Ralph. Come back. But um, let's get into these theme park announcements because there was a lot. Just reading down the list, I split it up into Orlando, California, and the international parks. There was some more news regard regarding like new um, parade shows, um, restaurants, and like small things. But this right Too here much. is <laughs> right. It was a lot, but this right here is going to be theme park. Like big, like rides, lands, things like that. So starting with Orlando, they're going to be introducing a villains land at Magic Kingdom. Basically, the vibe is is that this is where all of the Disney villains live. Um, they're putting Indiana Jones and Encanto attractions in Animal Kingdom. Two Cars attractions are coming to Magic Kingdom. In um, I like that. 
They're putting they it like. in Frontierland, I believe. And a Monsters, Inc. land is coming to Hollywood Studios and it's going to introduce Disney's first suspended roller coaster. Um, in California, a Coco ride is coming to Disney California Adventure and will be taking inspiration from the Haunted Mansion and Pirates of Caribbean rides. They're putting an Avatar land in Disney's California Adventure. Um, the di- the Avengers attraction that they've been building inside of Avengers Campus at Disneyland is officially going to be called Avengers Infinity Defense. Okay. And they're introducing a ride called Start Flight Lab, where RDJ has filmed scenes to return as Iron Man. Huh. International. I, I would have liked to see that in Orlando. Me too. We'll get we'll get to that. For international, Disneyland Paris is getting a Lion King attraction in area, and a Spider Man roller coaster is coming to Disneyland Hong Kong in Shanghai. So we can spin the block on Avengers Campus because Orlando needs it. Why doesn't Orlando have now? I heard that Avengers Campus when they first came out was a little bit lackluster. I think they only had that one Spider Man ride, and then they had the things, and they do have the Guardians of the Galaxy ride. They've uh, transformed Disney Ca- Disney's California Adventures Tower of Terror into a Guardians of the Galaxy elevator drop ride. Right. So they did have those, but overall, I heard the sp- the experience for Avengers Campus was a bit lackluster. And comp- and I think they might have been comparing it to the Marvel area in Islands of Adventure at Universal. Which, if you put the two side by side, Universal is taking it. But yeah. I think this Infinity Defense ride might put them up there, up there as well as the Stark Flight Lab. But I really think it's going to be Infinity Defense. I feel like Orlando has their Marvels. I think the only... Correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, if I'm talking shit, if I'm talking out my ass, but I think the only MCU theme ride that they have at Walt Disney World is the Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rerun, Rerun ride at Epcot. They don't have a has, full set out MCU area. I wonder if it has to do with some of the um, rights that Universal has to Marvel, some of the Marvel stuff being that they're also in the same state. Because, you know, like some state governing business laws and LLCs and all that mm. might conflict. Similar to why, like, certain restaurants, they don't have the same name in other states. I wonder if... I want, I'm not, I'm just, that's just a big stretch, but I wonder if there's some legal stuff behind that. That's because I would have loved an Iron Man Stark Tower ride in Orlando. Like, Avengers Campus, like, should have been something that, that that they should have been planning to put in Orlando, but the fact that you bring that up, I wonder if that's the reason because they don't have an Islands of Adventure in Universal Studios Hollywood. There's not an Islands, there's not an Islands of Adventure. So that that could that could be the case, and that sucks. That sucks. From a consumer, for, from from a, a consumer from a cons- perspective, from a sucks. consumer standpoint, that sucks because the Infinity. What I've heard from the Avengers, um, Infinity Defense ride is that they are fighting. The storyline is that the Avengers. I think is like a multiverse. It might be a multiverse thing that they are fighting an entity of entity a variant of Thanos called King Thanos and we're supposed to be traveling through Wakanda, New York, all of these different places from the MCU inside of this ride. Yeah. It it and it it, look, it sounds fun. Like I don't cuz correct me if I'm wrong, Disney technically from their theme parks like obviously all of them drive income and they care about them all, but isn't like Florida's the one that's like there we truly invest the most into this because it has the most land to expand and all of that good stuff. Yeah. So I, like, I think they might just be trying to build out Disneyland some more though, because they don't no, they don't no have land in LA. No, but I meant like giving it more, like giving it yeah. this Avengers Campus thing gives people a reason to go to Disneyland because of what you just said, which I was about to mention is that this compared to Disney World, Disneyland is small, and they they just can't announce like an expansion, like how they can announce an expansion for. Disney World. So this might be that this might be that thing. It might not even be rights at all. Rights, state rights might come into play 
but it might not be rights at all. This might be like, we need a reason to get people to come to Disneyland, Avengers yeah. Campus. And it, it yeah, because we will never know the truth behind it, but I'm... It, I didn't even get to go to Disneyland because I was sick when all of my friends were in town and I had strep throat. But like Disney World was so great. Like I definitely see why people go there like every year with their families. Like I would love to go back and like experience something like that at Disney World. Yeah. So that that could be the reason why they're not doing any Avengers. Like the only MCU attraction that we have is the Guardians of the Galaxy ride. Mm-hmm. And it, it could possibly just be that the way that that ride building is set up, it might not even fit in that Avengers campus area that they have set up. Probably. Like the fact that they had to turn Tower of Terror into some Guardians of the Galaxy attraction instead of just building Cosmic Rerun in Disneyland, it's probably they don't have the space for it. Probably. But but with everything else... um. I think the I, the idea of Villains Land and Magic Kingdom, even though I'm not the biggest Disney nerd, I can see that being fire. I'm not yeah. going to cap. I, I can see that being fire. Um, Monster Inc. Land as a Monsters Inc. fan, I want to go there. I if think it's going to be Disney lit. World, I want to go there. Concept, I the there. concept art of it mm-hmm. looks lit. The suspended roller coaster, so I think it's supposed to simulate you know how in the movie, how the doors were going around. Yeah. I, think that, I think that's what the coaster is supposed to simulate. That's fire. I like Monsters Inc. That's fire. Um, we didn't get to see Animal Kingdom. I have nothing to say about that. Cars, even though it was only Cars one, and we learned that from the Pixar versus DreamWorks tournament. I did enjoy Cars. I have good memories of Cars. I'm not mad at that. I I'm be, not mad at that. I'm not mad either because the rides that they're replacing, I think it's like Tom Sawyer's River Adventure and some other ride, and. I don't believe I've ever been on those rides in my life in, like, all the years I've been to Walt Disney World. So, yeah, let's go ahead and gut that out and put a franchise that's actually going to get people to go back there. Yeah. I think it's fire. I feel like I feel like they heard about Epic Universe from Universal, and they said, we coming for y'all next in a few years. We coming for y'all. I... The top... I have a top three contenders of things that could push Disney over the edge of Epic Universe. Um, the Monsters, Inc. Land. Yeah. I, I think it's going to take it. Villains Land at Magic Kingdom. Only uh, The only reason that's in my top contenders list because Epic Universe is supposed to have an area called Dark Universe, which is Monsters based. Now, they're not going to have the same vibe. I already know that going in because with them putting Villains Land and Magic Kingdom, Magic Kingdom is basically the family-friendly part of Walt Disney World. Dark Universe seems to be pushing the envelope a bit more with the monsters. The ride, that the main attraction for that ride is not like kid-friendly. It doesn't feel Kim friendly. It's not like put your four year old on this ride and ride. They're gonna be crying. Yeah, that's what that's what it gave. But I would love to see like Disney's takes on villains and how in depth they go into with this land, how in character, like the that actors and everything that they get to fit into it and how that compares to Dark Universe. And my third one is going to be it's, go- it's going to have to be the Avengers area. It's going to have to be. I would like to see if adding this Infinity Defense ride and this Start Flight Lab ride takes Avengers Campus over the edge. Because it's like, we also got to look future forward. Because like, even not only with the new rides, because there are people who want to go to those theme parks all the time. But like how you mentioned, like the villain live action movies do well. I'm pretty sure we're finna get a few more. I, I like this Mufasa live action. They finna probably bring up Scar and his background a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Like Cars, they might drop a new IP for that at some point. Like the, they might drop another Monsters Inc. movie because Monsters Inc. University is like five years. Well, old they had now. a series. Well, they got that Monsters Inc. series on Disney Fair. Plus. So it's like it does tie back into their animated and live action content, which is nice. But Universal got the same benefit on their side with Epic Universe because the Harry Potter series is coming out as well. Yeah, which would which would tie really well into that Defense of the Dark. I would not Defense of the Dark. I would say this though. I would say this though. 
the Harry Potter area of Epic Universe is not going to be the star of that of that that you thing. You think it's going to be that How to Train a Dragon? Section? No, that dark you... that dark universe, that monsters oh, yeah, area, yeah. that yeah, monsters right. area is sick, sickening. That how is, many is it? It's the monsters area. Train your dragons. Dark universe monsters, which is the monsters. Super Nintendo World, which is Super Nintendo World. Oh, is that is number two? Really... It's my top four. I'm writing it because I I've been following this shit since they've been building this shit. Dark universe is number one. Super Nintendo World is number two. How to Train Your Dragon is number three. The Harry Potter area is number four. When they showed yeah. that promo video for um the Harry Potter area it was in I'm I'm gonna be real We're, I'm just a Harry Potter fan I'm gonna enjoy it regardless but I feel I do agree that minute that Ministry of Magic ride will probably be the best thing in there and in in the Fantastic Beast show they are doing a Fantastic Beast like stage show type thing now the attractions yeah the area compared to the other three it's not going to be the star. It's not going to be the star of that theme park. That dark universe area is sickening. It's sickening. Mm-hmm. I see what you're saying. I see, and I forgot. I, I don't know how, but I forgot about Super Nintendo World. That's definitely bringing Super the kids Ninten- in. Super Nintendo World one because this is going to be bigger than the one that's in Universal Studios Hollywood because they're adding the Donkey Kong extension to it. And not, let's not even mention the rumor that they're also going to extend it and put a Luigi's Mansion attraction in it. And they are, and what they already got is like Super Mario and Mario Kart-based stuff. So that's... Mm-hmm. That's fire. Don't let don't let them start really growing into their Nintendo IPs. Don't really because they already because the already the other rumors that we had talked about on the previous episode, and not to step too far away from Disney, but they talked about integrating Pokemon inside of Universal Studios, and they talked about integrating Legend of Zelda inside of Islands of Adventure. They won with po- you know how much you can do with Pokemon. They they can make a Pokemon world. Pokemon world alone could be bigger than Nintendo world, which that's is so I'm, crazy. That's what I'm saying. So like. But as far as Disney goes, those out of all of the projects that they listed out, those are the top three projects that I see that are going to like. If we talk about new expansions, those are, those are my only three that I feel like are going to hold up to Epic Universe because Epic Universe is going is insane. Oh, my camera f- resolution come back. Pokemon World, bro. <laughs> Pokemon World. Hey, Epic Universe is insane. Universal is in when. When Epic Universe opens in 2025, it's going to be insane. And the rumored expansions. That that's why Disney World has to do all this stuff because I'm sorry, Epic Universe, and because they got a lot of land to expand on. Correct, mm-hmm. like they, like Florida is going to let them have it. Like they got laws just for Disney World and Universal Studios. Mm-hmm. Like they. They gonna do what they gotta. They gonna make that money. I, I'm I'm gonna say this in the next couple years, because I some they said they've already started executing these projects. As far as but as far as construction, I don't know when like the actual building of these attractions is going to start. But in the next couple years, it's gonna be some stuff to look out for in both theme parks. <laughs> Theme park wars. That's what we getting. It's theme park wars. Basically, like Epic Universe is about to take it, twenty twenty five, and then Disney's about to come out with all of these new attractions and expansions and things like that. It's we're gonna have a lot of new stuff to look at in the next couple years. If content creation was actually the primary form of income for us, I would say let's when we go to Universal Epic Universe, let's make a video. But we finna be too busy having fun. I'm mm. packing my Harry Potter robes. Nah. I'm excited for, um, I guess everything. Like, if I ever yeah. go international, I would love to check out the Lion King attraction in Disneyland Paris. Because I've seen a couple rides from Disneyland Paris, and they got, they got some heat over there. Honestly, yeah. If we did a Paris, a trip, because Paris is in France, correct, mm-hmm. which is in the UK. If we was to ever do a European trip. Let's let's make sure we do that. I do want to go to Italy and stuff for the food, but if we go to Paris, I, Dis- I, let's, Disneyland let's, Paris let's that. got Disneyland Paris got some heat. They got let's some go, heat. Yeah. We finna be spending about five thousand dollars on a trip, but we got it. Hey. We can, if we got a year to save, we can do that. <laughs> Give me two. 
<laughs> Give me, yeah. Just to be sure. At, just, at minimum just, one and just, a, at minimum one and a half. At minimum one and a half. Just to be at, sure. At <laughs> yeah. But she said that is five thousand dollars. <laughs> that is a <laughs> hey, and we trying to go to Disney. You already know the last time we went to Disney World. I wonder how much Disney World out in Paris costs in comparison to Disney World here. Because that's already a thousand dollars on a plane ticket. Woo! About one if we split in spots, that's still a good it's eight hundred to a thousand a piece for a hotel for all of us and that's, it's lodging. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. But and we getting souvenirs. We might have to ship that stuff from Paris to the U- for, to America. Red, buy another suitcase. Hey, Seuss. What you talking about? Look, I think he was going to betray Rhaenyra. The second Damon is going. I mean, not Damon. Aemon is going. I because would. if he has the second biggest dragon and he says he has just as much legitimacy to the throne as Damon once had, and now he has the second biggest dragon to basically guard.